but let's I, I'd say that let's uh, go th quickly through the MPI and then okay. um, yeah. like spend more of the time in the GPU part because I think a lot of people are interested in that. But right. I think Yus's uh, talk was yes. a great introduction uh, to to like what we are going to be talking about now because yeah. like these next technologies, well, GPUs are used every, everywhere, but MPI is definitely the workhorse in many of the supercomputers and and this kind of like codes are are used in these, especially what Yussi was saying about Mahti, which is this kind of like uh, machine designed especially for running these very big parallel programs. And those programs utilize MPI to do the parallel parallelization. Yeah. Uh, so, so what's the most important things to know? Let's say you have a program and you know it uses MPI because the docs say so. Yeah. Um, what options do we need for Slurm? So, so the first thing with the MPI program, if if you have if you need to compile it yourself, you need to usually use some MPI libraries that are provided by the system administrators. Because like MPI, because like when we talked about the different parallelization strategies, the, it's message passing. So a lot of stuff is transferred throughout the network. Mm -hmm. So usually these libraries, these MPI libraries, are compiled or created in a way that they can understand the hardware very well. So they can understand the high speed in network uh, that is okay. between the computers. Mm -hmm. So so that's why all of these um, like high performance clusters that have these kinds of like like or want to run these like big jobs, they they have this usually this um, high speed network and they have their own MPI installation that knows about this high-speed mm -hmm. network. So when so, you're uh, do, doing the MPI yeah. communication, the program is literally knowing about the low-level hardware and sending yes. messages as fast yeah. as possible. Yeah, and in many cases, like it tries to bypass the processor itself. So in, in for example, when there's communication happening, it tries to like go straight from the memory of the computer to, to the network card and from there through the network, mm -hmm. straight into the memory of another computer, basically like injecting into the memory of another computer without ever going through the processor okay. to speed up these communications. Yeah. And that for that reason, there needs to be, it's called like re remote uh, data management access. Mm -hmm. uh, I think like R it's the short term, RDMA, like yeah. anyway, but, but, okay. but basically these kinds of things. So, so you first need to find out if you need to compile something, uh, you need to find out the MPI libraries that that pro are provided by the system, and then use those. Like, yeah, and you need to, you need to find those in a module somewhere, yeah. and you need to remember to load these when you're running the MPI program. As yeah. Well. If you are using pre-existing MPI program that is installed by the system administrators, for for example, when I used the lumps demo on the first day, I used the lumps installation that we had installed. And in that case, you don't have to compile anything. You yeah. can just use that. It's same with CSC. Like if you want to use something like Promax or yeah. CP2K or something in the CSC machines, they already have existing installations and it's use, usually a good idea to use those because those have been tested and designed okay. yeah. to use the high-speed uh, yeah. interconnects. But from okay. the queue side, yeah. what do you need? So from the queue side, you need to tell the queue how many the so-called MPI tasks you need to uh, specify. So again, like there's going to be more terminology. Uh, it's unfortunate, <laughs> but but because there's differences in in like the meaning, there's going to be new terms. So in MPI world, there's going to be these like how many nodes you want. Like usually you want like if your all of your tasks fit into one node. So task is usually one CPU. But it can have multiple CPUs uh, mm -hmm. in the task. Uh, so, so previously, when we asked yeah. for multiple CPUs, we had the CPUs per task, and nobody mm -hmm. asked what the task is. But basically, that's the MPI task. So, when we are yeah. ru running like this shared memory parallelism, we are asking for CPUs per task, but mm -hmm. we are asking for only one okay. task yeah. Yeah. because we are not using MPI. But in the case of MPI, you want to ask for multiple of these MPI tasks. 
So, mm -hmm. and each of these is typically a one CPU, but can be more. And and typically, you want to ask for either one node, or you want to divide the program in a way that it's like uh, distributed among the computers in some even fashion. So there's in the abstract there's like nodes and n tasks per node. So for example, you would want to have one one computer with 20 CPUs and another computer with 20 CPUs because this means that then like mm -hmm. it's more balanced yeah. the, the job uh, requirement. Yeah. And and usually at least in Triton you want to use S run to run the program because that tells the like the program to use this MPI framework that is built into the mm -hmm. like system so that the MPI asks the slurm where should I place all of my like yeah. tasks and and mm -hmm. it does this communication layer underneath yeah. it yeah. Uh, to mm -hmm. do it but but so but in guess... practice yeah for most users, this can all be considered magic, and you know you need these options, and then yes. it works. Yeah, like usually, I would recommend just checking like the documentation here and just using those yeah. uh, like values and try to mm -hmm. like allocate like what how many programs you want. And try to allocate it in yeah. the way that uh, is mentioned there. Yeah. So, if we look at the example here, oh. do we want to go through it or? I think it's probably not needed. I mean, mm. I'd rather go to the GPUs. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, the MPI, yeah. like the MPI example here is basically just there's like a MPI implementation of the same uh, Pi code, uh, but it uses multiple processors to do it. And, mm -hmm. and basically what you do is like you load an MPI installation. In our case, in our cluster, it's open MPI that we mainly use. And yeah. then you compile the code so this is C code, so it's low level code. Okay, yeah. But and then you run it. But yeah, like this is like if your program uses MPI, you'll know it because they mention it. Yeah. So yeah. so you'll mm -hmm. you'll know about it because it, it mentions MPI. So if it doesn't have the letters M, P, and I <laughs> somewhere mentioned, okay. it's not using MPI really. Okay. So so yeah. so try to search the documentation for that sort of stuff if you want to do this yeah. MPI programs. And and come and ask us if you have problems with this because like this, this is because of the all of the network layer and and that sort of stuff. This is like high performance computing that rely like basically marries the program with the hardware, very mm -hmm. like in a different fashion than the previous programs we were so, running. Like here here we have a much more like closely knit connection. So mm -hmm. that's why there's lots of complications and that's why. Uh, yeah, yeah it's, it's mainly used for these very complex pro programs that want to run very big simulations. Yeah, yeah. Okay. If you have any questions, then then do do yeah. ask. But, but the, I will just for those people who don't want to use MPI, don't. I wouldn't touch the nodes and end tasks. I would just like okay. know that these are not meant for me. I don't. Yeah. I don't mm -hmm. care for those. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like mm -hmm. I just want to use multiple processors. I don't care for these yeah. tasks things. Yeah. Okay. There's Should no be. questions about this, which is yeah. roughly what I'd expect, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. a thing that you'll learn when you need it. And if you're using it, probably there's someone around you that figured this out and, already. And if you if you know that you want to code with MPI, I highly recommend going to the CSC MPI course, courses. Mm. They are very nice courses. I have taken a few of those uh, yeah. myself uh, to just to like get more information, and and they are yeah. very good courses on that. Yeah. Okay. Should we go to the break now a little bit early and come back and have a bit more time for GPU stuff? Yeah. Sounds good. Uh, until fifty-eight. Okay, great. So keep asking questions, if any, and see you in 10 minutes. Yep. Bye.